Hi there, once again we're back in the man cave, as you can see it's, uh, everything's a bit mucky, it's uh, in the middle of winter so we're getting back towards the back end of it now, February, looking forward to the summer. Um, today I'm going to show you how a primer stove works, uh, how to light it, how, what the different parts are. Um, these stoves, people have got them everywhere in the garage, in the sheds, in the attics, unused, they are fantastic things to use. Um, there's great advantages and I'll show you how they work and how, they, how to light them and what you can do with them. Okay, so there's a few different types of primer stove. Um, they are all work in the same way, they're all pretty similar. Um, this is actually a Valor, my actual favourite stove, I love this stove, it's very reliable, very simple, works a treat. Um, this is a travel um, primer stove, number 210, um, and this, this one can be dismantled, I'll show you both how they work. Um, now this one's got what's called a Rora burn on it, and you'll understand that when you hear it running because it's, it's really quite loud. So, to start with, the parts are, this is the air bleed valve and the safety valve. What that does is it, it, less, it takes away the pressure out of the, uh, out of the reservoir here. That means that no pressure will come up through the thing to the, to the burner, through the jet to the burner. Um, this here is the pump which pressurises the uh, reservoir, or the tank. Um, this is the spirit cup which we use to heat these elements here which in turn heat the vaporizer paraffin that's in here to create the flame. This is what's called a flame spreader and that sits on there. So it's very simple, there's not many, there's hardly any parts to it and there's only a couple of moving parts. Um, in here, this is a filler. That's what I like about this stove, it, the filler incorporates the um, air bleed valve at the same time. So what we use in here is paraffin and we only use paraffin, definitely never use petrol. You'd be arranging a funeral if you do, it's uh, lethal. So you don't uh, fill this more than three quarters full and that'll be ample. There's already some in here so we'll just check that's perfect. Okay, and as with everything like this, always move these out of the way. So put that back on there and nip it up. Make sure this is slack and loose. Same on this one, an air screw there, make sure it's loose when you're going to light it. Okay, next thing we do, this is methylated spirit, sometimes called denatured alcohol. Um, we, in, in Britain it's methylated spirits, it's purple, I understand that it might be clear, but it's the, it's the same thing, it's alcohol. And this is only used to light the stove. So. We pour that into the spirit cup until it's absolutely full. It doesn't matter if you spill a bit over, it burns away to nothing. Obviously I always work on something that's non-flammable. I like to use a tray. Okay, again, I'm going to put this out of the way. So, the next thing we need, the good old box of matches. Now, what we're going to do, light the fuel in there, the alcohol. Now that's blazing away and again put these out of the way. Turn this light off here so you can see it burning. Now what's happening here is that iron filings on that. This alcohol in here is now burning and heating up these vaporizing tubes here. In the middle of there you can see there is the jet where the gas will come to create the flame. Now you need your box of matches ready but what we're going to do is we're going to let this heat this nice and warm. Now you don't want to rush this, do not rush this under any circumstances otherwise you get black flare-ups, it'll be orange flames, absolutely awful. So remember, this is undone and that's just heating up and it's heating up these elements here which are going to vaporize the paraffin which is in the tank which will create the flame. And it's a very simple process. This here incidentally is a windshield so if you're out in the out in the field you can nip that around there and that'll save it getting drafty and you can take it off. We also have a pot stand when stove's going, you just help stabilise anything 
may be putting on it. We don't need those today because it's just an experiment just to uh, show you how it all works. So this will take you a minute or two to burn off. And that's exactly, as I say, you mustn't rush this part of the to this thing. And as it's getting there, it is now, we can tighten this up. And that create that will mean that this is now tight. And when we pump it, we'll get pressure up through the jet, which will release the paraffin into there. Now, as you see, again, we're just going to let this burn down as far as we can. Okay, it's getting there now, and now we have to be ready. The patience is a virtue. Don't have much of it myself, but I can when it's this because these, these are such brilliant stoves. It's, you can take them anywhere, they took them up Everest, and so many different makes, um, and so many available, and very little money. Okay, it's nearly away now. So we're going to give it a couple of pumps and it's lit. Now this is now gone, there's no spirit in here anymore. These element, these tubes here are now nice and warm and it'll continue to warm itself up. And now I'm give it and we've got it going nicely. Now that will boil. You can see immediately. You can see that the uh, flame spread is red hot. It's heating up beautifully. It'll boil water in no time in a kettle. It'll um, you can cook on it. My my partner came up with a great idea. She said. I hate the smell of the grilling of steaks in the house. Why don't we do it outside? We use this, you can get the pan red hot, you can sear the steaks, it's absolutely brilliant. Now there's two types of burner. This is a raw burner, which is actually my favorite, or there's a silent burner. Um, the raw tend to give off more heat, the silent burners are a bit more uh, refined, if you like, and they're very much quieter. Now, you can, as I say, keep pumping this up. Put your pot on there, it'll boil away merrily. I don't need to show you how that works because you can see it'll boil a kettle. If you want to turn it down, just release a bit of pressure in here. And you can simmer. So you can release it and you can let a bit more off. And if you feel like you've got too much out, bring it up to power. So there you go, very very simple, as I say, get your griddle panel there, get a nice steak going outside, eat the steak inside, much better than barbecuing, much much better. Okay, so we'll release the pressure, and that's the stove, it's out. Now obviously that's red hot still, so, but we'll put it to one side. So, quite simply, there's a few different parts of these stoves, and I'll show you on this one, it's a little bit easier to see. What we have here is, it's exactly the same, the jet is in the middle there, these are the um, vaporising tubes that you have to get hot to enable the um, paraffin in the tank to vaporise. You must make sure, this is important as well, that, that jet is clear so you have a pricker which is quite simply a tiny wire on the end of a piece of metal and you make sure that the jet is clear in the in the hole and that one was burning a little bit yellow so there's probably a bit of muck in there so for next time we'll give that a clean out like that this this traveling stove just screws on and if it, that's part of it like that it becomes the same thing so it's flame spread on so that's how that works very very simple very simple mechanism
What else do you need to know? So that one packs away into a box, which is really nice. Check that in the camera, it's going to be a good food while you're out. Um, this one is slightly different. It's the same sort of picnic stove, but this one's got what's called a lipstick burner. So that would screw together in exactly the same way as the other one. This would come off, that would screw in there. But in this case, this is a vaporizing tube with the jet in the top, which is just made merely a hole. Um, and again, it was it just sits on there. That sits on there, heats the um, vaporizing tube, which is also the jet. It's called a lipstick burner. Um, that's your spreader. Uh, well, your cup and this your spreader goes on top of there. Now this is a this is an Optimus. So we've got a Valor, an Optimus, and a Primus, all working exactly the same way. There is no difference whatsoever. Um, Let's have a little play of this from while we're here. I'm going to use it for a bit. I've also got another one up in the rafters, which is a, I think it's called a Bouflam. Now I made that myself, that's a, a, another type of windshield which I made. Flames when it goes on there. This is a tiny little stove, really pretty little thing. So let's try again. So again, all the mess in there, put it out of the way, make sure that the air bleed valve is open, and light the mess. So once again, you can see it's burning away, heating up this vaporizing tube. Again, these were really, really popular a long time ago. People took them on, but nowadays everyone goes to the cafe. But it's quite nice to do your own thing. And again, this will, this will cook whole meals. They still use all around the world as a main source of cooking. These little pot stands sit in there. Always three for the stability. And that's uh, burning down and we can't rush this this part of it. As I made this, this little windshield so if you're out in the field you can whack that on there. Bring that to there again. And again, we need to wait till this all burns away, can't rush it. And this is now heating up this vaporizing tube here. And as I say, the jet's in the middle, and this is still loose. Okay, this is coming to an end now, so we'll tighten up the the bleed valve and give it a couple of minutes. So you'll just see this disappear. And 
the only flame that will be coming off it. Again, this is a little roar burner. It does make a bit of a noise, but by God, it's superb things. You turn it down a bit if you want. A little simmer. And there she is. Running beautifully. Okay, and we'll knock it off. As before. Very, very simple. So, two different stoves will do exactly the same thing. Right, I know that um, I told a few people are a bit worried about using these because they're obviously the naked flame, they, they flare up, but as long as you, maintain, you follow the rules, paraffin in here, methylated spirits in here to heat the, uh, heat the element up. Um, that open the air valve when, you, when you're lighting and close when you want pressure. Again, unscrew it, put this out of the way somewhere safe when you want it to cool down. You finish using it. These use all over the world. Some people use them as a primary cookers. These still these days in the Western world tend to use them for mountaineering, camping, picnics, anything a bit of fun. Um, as I say, we use ours to griddle steaks on outside the house so we don't stink the house out and grease everywhere. Fantastic, proper seared steaks, lovely. Um, it's been a pleasure doing this for you. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've got one in the attic that you can recommission. All the parts are available online. You can have a look around. If not, put it on the auction site. Some will buy it. You know, people crying out for them. Thanks for watching. Cheers now. Bye bye.